Hi chaps and chapesses, and this afternoon I'm going to show you how to make brushes. So brushes are the... What are you doing? What? No, I'm trying to make a film. Well, I thought it sounded interesting. I thought I'd like to see what was going on. Go away. Well, uh, okay, all right, there's no need to be like that, all right. See you later, leave it, you do it then, bye. Sorry, slightly put me off my stride there. So this afternoon, we're going to talk about how to make brushes. Now you're wondering, why on earth do I want to learn how to make a brush? The brush fly, as seen here, the brush fly is one of our staple bait fish patterns for Giant Trevally, along with many, many other predatory species. Originally coming from a tiger fish pattern in South Africa, it was then turned into a larger form, which has become a very, very useful pattern. Now, once you've made a brush, you can put that onto anything. Now, what do I mean by a brush? A brush is, in fact, the length of craft fur material that we have turned into almost like a long pipe cleaner. It's a bit like a giant chenille, if you like. But for salt water, we need to make it with stainless steel core. So to do that, I have constructed the Brush Machine 2000. Also available in many other colors. No, seriously, sorry, not really. Um, this is mine. There are many different ways of tying brushes. You can use a drill with a little attachment. Uh, you can buy specific machines. I decided to build my own. And the easiest way to do that was in fact actually buy a sewing machine motor straight off eBay. I used an old shelf which I put together and I've got a foot pedal so that I can actually check my speed, etc. And then I've got this dropping shelf. So those are the most important ingredients on a brush machine. So to tie brushes, you're going to need a number of things. The first ingredient you need is some very, very thin strand stainless steel wire. Um, this, again, I bought off, I think, wires.com, which you can find. Uh, but it has to be stainless steel, because if it's not stainless steel, you will find that it will rust, and then your brush will fall apart very, very rapidly. So that's the first ingredient. We need some good wire. And then you use a load of different fiber materials. Now, my personal favorites, are the SF Blend, uh, the Steve Ferrer's uh, SF Blend, which comes from H2O products. Um, I use uh, Funky Fiber, um, and then also Mirror Image, um, and then various other different types of fibers. And also you can then start messing around with it. You can start putting in some rubber legs, you can make crustaceous brushes, which um, are available from Enrico Puglesi, who makes these uh, pre-tied brushes. And you can pre-mix all of your own colors. You can have bands, you can play around with different angel hair and synthetics, and you can tie up really any kind of incorporated brush you would like. That's the joy of tying your own. As well, you're gonna need some good sticky wax. Um, you are going to need a pair of scissors, which is all right for cutting wire. And then you're also gonna need a decent pair of scissors for cutting fiber. So once you've got all these materials together, um, then we're gonna start laying it out and tying a brush. So what we want is we want to be looking at probably sections of material which are no longer than maybe an inch, half an inch to an inch. So what I like to do is pull these off as a clump rather than attacking from the base just so that you end up with the longer materials if you ever do need it. And for this we're going to use bleeding grey which always sounds very appealing. So we've got our materials. We've got our wire. Okay, 
Okay, so I've got everything set up. I've cut my materials. I've cut them into about an inch length material going along here. Um, I think I've probably got enough there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my steel wire. I'm going to put two or three turns around the hook here just to lock it off. And I'm going to run this and at the other end here I've got a spring clip which has been attached into here that is to take up the tension and also as it spins it will stop it snapping immediately so once I've done that I've got a little lock off here I'm going to take my wax so this is just ordinary dubbing wax and I'm going to wax up this wire and make it nice and sticky Then I'm going to start laying out my materials on the shelf. So you want them reasonably evenly spaced. Doesn't need to be too dense. And you'll see why in a second. So I've got those all laid out. I've got my wire roughly in the middle. And as I said, you can play around with these different colors. You can put different bands in. So if I'm doing a crab fly or something like that, then I'll probably have you know, a segment of buff and then tan and then maybe black. Like the Gumby crab, for example, when I tied up that, I used a brush. Once I've done that, I'm gonna then take my other wire, string it up. I'm gonna put some wax on this as well. And then I'm gonna lay that flat on top there. Put it around a couple of times. Then I'm going to use my wire scissors, clip that off, just put a couple of wraps in there like that. Okay, so there we are, brushes all laid out. Just tidy it up a little bit, make sure it's all neat and tidy, like so. And then we're going to drop the shelf. Once we drop the shelf, all I'm going to do is just very gently put my foot on the pedal, give it a few spins, and it'll just slowly start spinning down the material. It doesn't take much, and as you can see here, the hook is expanding the spring here, taking the tension. Give it a few turns, and then here is my stick. My stick, I've got some Velcro, the hook side wrapped around here and I'll just start teasing out the material. Once I'm happy that that's all fairly even, I'll go ahead and spin it up a bit more. This is where the sewing machine motor and the foot pedal come in really handy because I can actually gauge exactly and that's it it's done so I'm going to take my wire scissors chop it that end chop it that end and there is my brush that I can now use like a big piece of chenille and wrap around a big size 6 hook and that is what I make my body out of with a brush fly. Well guys, that's it. That's how I make a brush for making brush flies and I uh, hope you found that video useful. Um, there are numerous different patterns that you can make with brushes. Um, I made the Gumby Crab, um, which was a crab pattern um, made with a brush because it's actually much easier to trim than uh, banding down various different bits of material. Just spin a brush, wrap it on there, trim it down, done. And you can make all sorts of different uh, banding colors in the body, which is really interesting. Throw in a bit of rubber in there. You can make some really cool different body, body patterns. So the brush, it's a very ubiquitous piece of fly tying material. Uh, you can use it for many, many different things. It's a very easy way of doing it. 
Uh, as I said, you can do it with a hand drill, one that you can have very speed control on. That's a very quick way of doing it. Um, but we've used brushes for a number of years and uh, I'm not sure I could really fish for GTs without them anymore because I'm, I'm too lazy to tie up flies in any other way. So brush fly, brushes in lots of different colors. Hope that was useful. And if you like this video, then please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you later.